Well, hey folks, Real Honesty with John Rithlin. I'm John Rithlin. This is my review of the four March episodes of, in 1993 of Monday Night Raw. One of these was only 36 minutes. So that one's going to be easy to review. If you guys have watched my January, um, Jan the review of the January episodes and February episodes, you know what to expect. Very, very <clears throat> short reviews of each episode, just condensed into one show, because since it's only, <clears throat> since every Raw episode is only an hour at the most, and that's before you take the commercials out, they're easy to review, and I can review four in like about a 20, 25 minute block. May is going to be a little interesting because it's five episodes, so I may just say, okay, these squash matches happen, and just focus on the bullet points, because I really don't want to do two episodes for that. I appreciate everybody for interacting with me, enjoying my rants, um, and talking to me if you feel you agreed or disagreed with what, anything I said. Always happy to talk to people. 95% of the feedback has been positive. Of course, there's that 5% where people just want to be negative all the time. I'm not saying I don't get down. I'm not saying I don't get negative about the current product or older product. But I generally love wrestling. Really love what, uh, really just love the sport of it. I appreciate any wrestling fans for talking to me, whether I follow your channel, whether you follow me on Twitter, whether you don't follow me on Twitter and you're a first-time viewer. I really appreciate you guys for watching. Um, over 80,000 views so far, maybe 100,000 by Mania. Highly unlikely, considering I'm actually recording this at the end of February, just before SmackDown. So, we'll see. Who knows? I might get up to 90,000 views. But I just appreciate everybody for watching and making um, my channel grow. And, of course... Big shout-out to the Durbinator. I, I don't know if he'll watch this review, but big shout-out to the Durbinator for writing a ton of fresh content and a ton of balance to the show. Um, obviously, he's not here right now, but we do the Raw SmackDown reviews. For, again, for those who are first-time viewers, Raw SmackDown reviews um, and pay-per-view reviews and stuff like that and other videos. So feel free to check out the videos that I've done. And i got a ton of videos coming up that I already got saved on my phone. So let's get on with it. Um, <clears throat> that was a long introduction, but it was needed. So, four episodes. They didn't have one on the 29th of March to lead into Mania, I guess, maybe because they were preempted or they already had, they had a March to WrestleMania thing um, that was going to be a way to hype up, hype up Mania. And that was, of course, announced at the end of the uh, March 22nd episode. But um, this generally, it was interesting because a snowstorm hit, like, I think during, like, one of the big, or one of the, like, shows later, and they were in Pisc Poughkeepsie, I believe is how you say it, instead of the Manhattan Center. Rob Bartlett was on commentary and in the first episode, and he was Elvis. And look, I don't think Rob Bartlett's a mean guy. I really don't think he is. But Rob Bartlett was one of the worst wrestling commentators ever. Now, he was better than Mark Madden. He was better than Josh Matthews. He was better than Steve Mongo McMichael. I, don't, I think Mike Adamley was actually better than Rob Bartlett because Mike Adamley, not really that great and but Rob just generally didn't seem to know much about the product and I'm sorry but this Elvis stuff went on forever it wasn't funny it wasn't any good it was shit it was absolute dog shit again Bartlett doesn't seem like a bad guy so I'm not gonna pick on the guy or say oh the guy deserved this the guy deserved that I certainly was glad he wasn't around in WWE for very long because he just wasn't cut out for it but anyway my favorite match actually of all these episodes was the first match. Brett versus Fatu in a WWE title match. Great stuff. Great TV match. It showed that Brett could have a really good match with just about anybody. Fatu was still fairly young in the business. Had only been in it about five, six years at this point. Um, I know he worked as part of the Samoan SWAT team in at, uh, NWA, late NWA, early WCW. But this was great stuff. You had Samu come down and try and like score a pin on uh, Brett. After Fatu had rolled to the outside. That didn't work. And of course, Afa got a drop kick from Brett. But it was good stuff. And Brett fought from underneath his usual spots. Fatu had some good moments. <clears throat> didn't look weak. Tapped out to the sharpshooter. Great stuff. Great title match. It sh it, Brett absolutely was on fire at this point. And it made the title matter a little more. That, oh, it's, you know, new content here on Raw. You know, it's a new live show, even though it was taped. I mean, almost every, with the exception of maybe like 12 to... 24 Raws a year, everything was taped because it was the production costs and everything. So they had to tape one, sometimes maybe two episodes, it, you know, at, at a time. Or, like, you know, extra episodes, I mean. Sometimes they would tape a full month's worth. And then they would just do house shows, man. They just broadcast stuff. So anyway, kind of like what NXT does. But good psychology, good stuff. Brett retains. Vatu didn't look weak. 
Crush on the Beach. It was more hype for Mania 9 for his match with Doink. Speaking of Doink, Doink versus Coco Beware. Coco at this point was just... Coco was pretty much a job guy for his whole goddamn career, but at this point he was... He was just fodder for Doink. Doink won. Evil Clown Doink. And he cream-pied Rob Bartlett. Have fun on seeing that. Um... Hated Rob Bartlett as Elvis. Don't hate Rob Bartlett the person. I mean, again, it's like the guy was bad, but he was also inoffensive. I think he was just trying too hard. And maybe Vince thought the, the stuff was funny. I don't know how. Maybe the steroid trial was getting to Vince and he was like, I got to bring in this guy. Bad idea. Anyway, DiBiase and IRS interview was a hype for Mania 9. Luca versus PJ Walker, squash, and he put PJ Walker in front of a mirror and. I hate Lex Luger. I hate him. I absolutely fucking hate it. I can't stand the guy one bit. I know that he did have some good matches with people, but that's because people carried him. He's a really good performing heel. The narcissist gimmick fit him perfectly because he loved himself. And his physique was the only goddamn reason he ever got any attention. Because it sure wasn't his work rate, and sure as fuck wasn't his promos. And, and karma bit him, didn't it? Um, but yeah, Luger beat PJ Walker. Steiners beat Dwayne Gill, who had hair at the time, Gilberg, otherwise known as, and uh, Barry Hardy, not the Hardy's father, or not related to any of the Hardy's. Obviously not the Hardy's father. If you've seen their documentary, he doesn't look a thing like him. The Steiners won easily. It was cool to see Dwayne Gill, though. That was, that, was, that, was, that was really, really cool, because, I mean, like, even in 93, he was starting to lose his hair. I'm one to talk, but that's why I keep my hair short. This is Squash. Decent episode. The Brett Batu match was certainly the highlight. And then three, uh, it was the 3-8-93 edition, next, very next week. Bartlett started to sort of become Elvis again, be, get possessed by the ghost of Elvis. It was stupid. Fortunately, they cut away from that. Hogan and Beefcake had a promo, Hyping Mania 9, and just, and then Hogan doing the power play to get, I will be doing, by the way, by the time this goes up, it still won't be up at a Mania 9 red, 25 year reflection, because I hate myself, and I honest to God, just want to punish myself by watching a shit pay-per-view. But Money Inc. versus Santana and Virgil, it was fine. Virgil was never... Virgil, after that whole program with DiBiase, really just stuck around for a couple years. Um, the program with DiBiase was well done when he waffled him with the uh, million dollar... Mm, waffles. Waffled him with the million dollar... God damn it, now I want waffles. Waffled him with the million dollar belt, you know, at Rumble 91, right after that tag match they had with Dusty and Dustin. That was great stuff. The biggest pop that Virgil, I think, ever got in his career. He didn't get a lot of them. But good stuff, Santana, Santana and Zell Myodor phase. It, they worked well together, I guess, for a makeshift team. Money Inc., of course, got the win. Duh. Of course they were going to get the fucking win. <coughs> because they were building up some momentum to take on Hogan and Beefcake later. Well, at Mania 9. Tatanka versus a jobber, Phil Apollo, apparently. Um, I actually had to listen to the announcers because I didn't hear the name and I didn't see the graphic night. Couldn't be bothered to really care. Tatanka, though, really good stuff. Um, you know, Tatanka's a really underrated worker. I wish he had gotten a championship. Oh, yeah, he should have gotten a championship at Mania 9, and I'll get to that rant later. Later in that, in that reflection, by the way. Because even though I reviewed everything, just quick plug, even though I reviewed every single WrestleMania and ranked them from worst to best, and ranked WrestleMania 9 pretty goddamn low, I can go full in on a rant on Mania. And I will do that with select Manias over the years, depending on how, of course, how often or how long I do this channel. I mean, I'm 37 right now. Don't know if I'm going to be doing it when I'm 40. It also depends on whether the Durbinator is going to be, you know, whether Chris is still going to want to do the show, you know, as, as the years go on. I hope so, but we'll see. Anyway... <clears throat> Um, then we had promos from Brett, Mr. Fuji, Yokozuna chiming in, of course, and Undertaker to Hype Mania 9. Papa Shango versus Mike Edwards, squash. Probably should have ended about five, six moves before it did. Bob Backlund versus uh, Tony DeMauro, and it was a squash. I mean, Tony got a couple spots in, but Bob Backlund showing the great wrestling that he had, great wrestling acumen that he had, and I'm sure still does, even at his age. Don't get him back in the ring, please. But it was fine. It was fine for what it was. And then Rick Martel versus Mr. Perfect. Good for a TV match. It was a little short. <clears throat> but it was good stuff. It's good. I really, really enjoyed it. The problem is, is the result occurred during a commercial break. Even though I'm sure they had taped this show, they could have edited it together better. And they didn't. 
And oh, Mr. Perfect One during the commercial. Great pacing. Best show pacing. Pacing. Much wow. Um, but Mr. Perfect One, cool. Just build more to uh, Perfect versus Lex Luger at Mania 9. Poor Mr. Perfect. And then, so that was the end of that. It, it was a couple decent matches, but the rest were squashes, of course. And the March 15th edition. Monsoon Heenan and not Vince on commentary. I believe it was Rob Bartlett as Vince. This is where Rob Bartlett really started to get annoyed. Because he tried to be over-animated like Vince, but with Vince on commentary, he was over-animated in a funny, with goofy way. Bartlett was doing it to the point where Heenan and even Monsoon were getting upset. Like, Monsoon, I, I swear to God, I thought Monsoon was going to start slapping him. I mean, I kind of wish he would have, actually, with how annoying he was being. I mean, again, Bartlett just was kind of shit on commentary. He was not very good at the commentary. Yeah, have I gotten that point across? But you had Razor versus Russ Greenberg. Of course, Razor wins the squash. Russ Greenberg, journeyman. At least journeyman WWE. Because, I mean, it's like he, anytime he appeared, it was either in a tag team or in a squash match and he was getting beat. I think Mario Gennetti versus, versus him happened, like, on a match. Which, or in, uh, on a Raw, which wasn't bad. Um, <clears throat> they were in... Poughkeepsie, as I said, massive snowstorm. I mean, some of the shots they showed, like, snow was shoveled off on the side of the road, and it was taller than, like, a Cadillac car. Which, I know even the older Cadillac cars aren't the tallest cars, but they're still really big, and the fact that the snow reached the roof of that, pretty scary, or at least close to the roof, that was pretty scary. Um, finally, and by the way, you know, I mean, of course, by the time this goes up, the snow will hopefully be gone. But yeah, we got like a foot of snow here up on my hill last week, like last Sunday, like late Saturday, early Sunday morning. I had to drive to work. Didn't miss a day at work. Refused to. Absolutely refused to miss a day at work because of snow. But boy, that, that commute has not been fun. And we kept getting snow. I think we got like half a foot yesterday morning, but then it was gone by the afternoon. Unfortunately, it's all melting off. Thankfully, spring is here. I don't like the heat, but I hate the snow. And there we go with Typhoon versus a jobber. Didn't catch the guy's name. I didn't. Typhoon, by the way, 1993, shocked the world. He's a shock master. That's who he was. It, that, that, did I get the joke across? By the way, I killed the joke. But, yeah, Typhoon is funny because he became the shock master in WCW shortly after this. I think, like, by August of 93. And he was in Fall World 93. He was on, I think he was on Halloween Havoc 93. I know he's on the Battle Bowl pay-per-view and I think he was back in WWE by like 94 like I mean that's how quickly WCW got rid of him it was like oh the character didn't get over well no you fucking idiots how could the Shockmaster get over except as a joke because of how he looked I mean it was fucking ridiculous and then we go to Heenan interviews the Giant Gonzalez and Harvey Whippleman Harvey Whippleman looks like if you tried to throw water on him the water would fight to get off of him Harvey Whippleman looked like a scuzzy disgusting human being Looked like he'd never fucking showered. And I don't mean just because of his character. I mean, like, legit. It looked like a pressure washer wouldn't even be able to get the dirt and scuzz off the guy. I don't know what it is. But that guy, ugh. Like, I felt like taking... Un I had already taken a shower before I started watching these episodes. And I felt like taking another shower after the guy had talked. Because that's just how dirty and scuzzy the guy is. Now, and, oh, he's always one of the be one of the most underrated managers. No, he's not any good. He was terrible. Oh, he could get generate heat. Well, yeah, because people genu genuinely could beat him up. At least it seemed like it. I don't know. Maybe the guy is legit tough. I mean, he would almost have to be with how he looked. But, <clears throat> ugh. Scuzzy, disgusting-looking human being. That's just all. Um, I'm not saying I'm any prize. Certainly not. That's why I got a face made for radio. But Harvey Whippleman was shit. He did need a manager, though, or uh, he did need to be the manager for the Giant Gonzalez, though, because if you're going to get the Giant Gonzalez over the heel, you got to have Harvey Whippleman, because at the time, Heenan wasn't being a, a manager. Others were busy. And Giant Gonzalez was shit. Now, rest in peace, I'm not saying that he was a shit person, he just was shit in the ring. I mean, he was shit as Elegante, he was shit as Giant Gonzalez. It's unfortunate that, he, that, health, um, that his health took a dive, and he had to be on dialysis due to uh, kidney issues and I think that's what contributed to his death I know he was in his 40s it's unfortunate 
At least I think Johnny Gonzalez is dead. But it's unfortunate, but the guy just wasn't cut out for the business. He's apparently a really nice guy, and I'm sure he was. I'm sure he was a great guy. Just should have never been in the ring. And then we go to Papa Shango versus Bob Backlund. This was decent. This was a shockingly decent match. It was the right opponent for Papa Shango. That is an excellent pun. Don't tell me otherwise. It was a terrible pun. Terrible pun. But you know what? All puns are terrible. And brilliant at the same time. But it was good stuff. I enjoyed it. Bob Backlund gained the win. Great stuff. Certainly no complaints. It was funny because Papa Shango was actually on the Mania 9 card versus Tito Santana. But it was a dark match. They should have actually had that on the main card. Because one, then Tito Santana would have been on the first nine Mania mat, er, first nine Mania cards. Which actually would have tied Hulk Hogan. But no, they couldn't have that. Or they just wanted to... They didn't feel that that match had any hype, which I'm thinking with how padded that show was, you know, Taker and Giant Gonzalez taking about four years to be done, you could have just thrown that match on there. I don't know. <clears throat> Good stuff, though. Backlund and uh, Papa Shango, unique matchup. Money Inc. was an interview, and of course, Taker, more Mania 9 hype. The Head Trinkers versus the Nasty Boys it was okay. They battled at the concession stand area where everybody got mustered. I think, I, 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 Fucking think some of the fans in the front row got mustered. All I know is the head shrinkers were covered head to toe in yellow. The nasty boys were shit workers. Could never really do anything. I don't get why they fucking got. I couldn't stand the nasty boys. Head shrinkers at least were good workers. Um, and then WWE did a little charity plug thing where they talked about their wrestlers meeting with special needs kids, sick kids, and that kind of stuff. And that is good stuff. It's nice to see Boss Man kind of in his ring gear, high fiving a kid and talking to him and. Bobby Heenan being the gracious individual that he could be and stuff like that. And genuinely, that this is the kind of charity stuff that WWE could do, and it was great. As opposed to what Stephanie called the charities, you know, that WWE's been doing just about a few years ago. What'd she call it? Oh, yeah, something about philanthropy. Good stuff, you dumb cunt. Um, Snuck in that little word there. And that's current Stephanie, or at least a couple years ago, not Stephanie back then. Um, She was still a kid. So anyway... Um, the 22nd, uh, the 22nd, uh, March 1993 edition, <clears throat> odd one, 36 minutes, four matches. Two of them were squashes. Actually, well, yeah, two of them were squashes. Damien Demento and Repo Man, of all people, versus the Bushwhackers, who took about three to four minutes to get to the ring. The match was sloppy, but the, the Bushwhackers, as the Sheepers, had beaten themselves up and bled themselves up so much. The Vince gave them a ton of years by not having them do as much and having them be much more comedic in WWE. And it was a great thing. They got t- they got good money. They were able to entertain the kids. The Bushwhackers can't make sure it was ridiculous, and I'm not saying that the Bushwhackers should have been... I didn't think the Bushwhackers should have been in the Hall of Fame. Now, when I saw their speech, I go, all right, you know what? Good. 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 I'm fine with it. Because they genuinely loved it. The crowd loved it. That was fantastic. But yeah, they beat Damien Demento and Repo Man. <clears throat> the match was only about five, maybe six minutes. But it really should have been about four. Maybe three. Because Repo, at this point, Barry Darso wasn't much of a worker. And Demento... Demento was... Besides being like in a couple, in a couple uh, notable moments in 93, had nothing in wrestling. He had nothing in wrestling. I mean, good for him. He seems to be doing better outside the business. Bushwhackers win. Cool. Um, Tatanka beats Reno Riggins, which that name rings a bell, and I don't know why. Maybe I'm thinking of just a movie character, but Reno Riggins rings a bell. I didn't bother to <clears throat> um, Google Google the guy, uh, Google the guy's like Wik- Wikipedia or anything, but the name seems familiar. But Tatanka wins. Good stuff. Andre the Giant video package, Hall of Fame stuff. I'm sad now, but it was good. And Andre, one of the greatest of all time. One of the, the true giant of WWE, of wrestling in general. There will never be another Andre the Giant. It is sad just how much pain he was in and the, what his body went through and everything. But he still kept wrestling and wrestling and wrestling because he loved it. And unfortunately, he died at the age of 46. He lived, he lived a hell of a life. I mean, he knew he wasn't going to live long, but it's like he lived a hell of a life. It was sad, but it was also uplifting because he got to see some, some good key moments that Andre was involved in. 
And then Money Inc. versus Jobbers. Money Inc. wins. Duh. No shock. Kamala versus Doink. Doink wins by countout because he gave a present that had nothing in it to Kamala, and Kamala got confused. They'd done this finish before. <coughs> and then afterwards, they had something where Doink was trying to get Kamala with a chair when Kamala was under the ring trying to get to him. And then Kamala snuck up behind Doink, uh, outsmarting him, and attacked Doink, and then that. And then they did a little hype for Mania, March to Mania. So overall, the March episodes are pretty good. I mean, you could probably skip the um, 22nd episode. I mean, but there's there's a good good few key matches on here that are worth watching. Like I said, the Brett Fatu match was clearly head and shoulders above everything else, but there were some good matches and some, I don't want to say underrated classics, but there were some good good matches here. So anyway, I would say that it was a lot of fun. I mean, sure, there were some squash matches, a bit of filler. Rob Bartlett still being on TV was a little annoying, especially as the Elvis thing, and especially as a over-the-top Vince, he was not funny. Maybe he was told not to be funny, I don't know. Anyway, what do you guys think of the March 1993 episode? What do you guys think of the of the Raw episodes for like first few years when they were only an hour? Like, share, comment, subscribe, Twitter link in the description. It's been Real Honesty with John Rithlin. I'm John Rithlin, and I will see you soon.